What's up everybody, it's your boy LB Back at you guys again with another album review So, um, to start this thing off, the album I want to talk about today comes from the Wu-Tang family Um, as you, you know, a lot of you people know Wu-Tang has countless affiliates and everything But, out of all the affiliates, I think some of the best well-known and popular groups out of the, the out of the Killer Bees is probably Sons of Man and Killer Army. So today I'm gonna talk about Killer Army's debut album, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, released in 1997, Wu Tang Records, Priority Records. All right. So um, for those of you who may not be familiar with Killer Army, they're a rap group from Staten Island, New York, and Steubenville, Ohio. Is Lord, Killer Sin, um, Don Pacino, and Knife Prince are all from Staten Island. Beretta Nine, now known as Kinetic Nine, Shogun Assassin, and the producer of the group, Fourth Disciple, all hail from Steubenville, Ohio. Um, I might make another video telling you guys that whole New York Midwest connection between Wu-Tang because that's a long story. But anyway, um, you know, most of the members had known each other for years because, um, you know, somewhere, some part of Riz's life, he had spent time in Steubenville, Ohio. But I get, like I said, that's, that's a whole nother story and that'll be a whole nother video. But most of the members have known each other for a long time. But anyway, um, they made their official debut in 95. Um, when they released uh, some collaboration singles with um, the other group, Sons of Man. Uh, I think one of the most popular songs was uh, Soldiers of Darkness. Um, that, was a, that was a real banger in the mid-90s. And, uh, you know, they, they continued, Killer Army continued to release singles um, throughout the 90s until, you know, it led up to, to them recording this album and dropping this in 97. So, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, it's, um, it, it takes its title from a document that, was, that, came, that came about in the 1980s that, um, that talked about a new world order um, that the government, I think, was like discussing or some kind of, that's all I know, some kind of document about new, in the 1980s that came to light about new world order. That's where that... Uh, the title comes from. And they also said a title with an I guess a band called Black Lung. They also had a title of their album called Solid Weapons for Quiet Wars. But um as it being man, this album it has a lot of uh, conspiracy theories in its subject matter. Um also, you know, with a heavy dose of five percenter philosophy, which is expected of most no Wu Tang affiliated groups, you know what I'm saying, and um, you know their whole mythology or whatnot is pretty much based upon um military combat, you know what I'm saying, with but with street knowledge, street oriented rhymes, man. Um, I think one of the biggest standouts in this album and in the group, I would say, would be Fourth Disciple. Um, I think he's like the the real the biggest star out of all because his production really went well with the groups um rhymes their subject matter and their delivery and what i like most about the album is how his fourth disciple used samples and sound effects like his, his samples you, you can tell that um he took a lot of time with the samples he didn't just throw samples just to be sampling he didn't just throw samples of songs to say, oh, that sounds good. You can tell that he took his time and he made sure that every sample that was on these on this on the songs was there for a reason and it fit well with the record. It fit well with the subject matter. It just fit it just fit with the songs, period. You can tell that he really took his time with that. You know what I'm saying? You can tell that each sample was there for a reason. That it's not just put there just to make it sound good. That it, it helps to tell the story and enhance the feeling of the of the track. Um, another thing is the sound effects that are used. He made great use of like sound effects of war. 
Like, a um, majority of the songs, you can hear, like, tanks being driven, bombs going off, rapid gunfire from automatic weapons. I mean, you can just hear it in the background through these songs. And as the MCs are rhyming. That's what gives this album such a war atmosphere. Because I guarantee you that once you get through listening to this album, you're definitely going to feel like you just got through watching, like, a... A war film, like like you just got through watching Apocalypse Nine or Platoon or something like that. And also to mention war films, he also made great use of using ec excerpts from war films. Um, the one that's used on this album most mostly is um, Full Metal Jacket, which was a war film that came out in 1987. Um, it was about Vietnam. Um, that excerpt from that film is used heavily throughout this album so that that gives it another enhanced feeling of war also the, the MC's delivery you know there is a it's regressive and you can like feel like the the emotion and the anger that that they all have inside when they're um when they're rhyming um I compare their emotion and their feeling to like metal artists who who scream in their records. You know what I'm saying? That's what I compare it to that because you know most metal majority of the time metal artists when they're screaming, they're screaming because they're bringing about pain and anger and emotion. While they don't scream, you know there's a you can feel you can hear and feel the aggression that they have in their voices when they're addressing like things about like you know social. Social commentary, you know, it, like things that happen in the inner city, um, you know, government corruption, government conspiracies. You can you can just hear the anger and feel that emotion that they feel, and um, you know that's that's what makes this album great. That's what makes this a great album. Um, also, man, the MCs, uh, like. They're all capable MCs. They're all great MCs. But out of all the six MCs that are, on, that are on here, I would say that Killer Sin and Don Pacino are the standouts. Like, and I put more emphasis on Killer Sin. Like, Killer Sin, out of, out, of, out of all the guys in this group, Killer Sin is my favorite one. Like, and he's considered one of the most skilled, one of the most skillful Wu Tang affiliates. He, out of all the Wu Tang affiliates, I'm not just talking about this group. And you know, it's, it's so many of those affiliates. You know, Killer Sin is considered one of the most lyrically talented and skillful out of all of them. And it shows on this record. Great MC, man. Um, his his um, solo track, Burn the Season, is a favorite of mine. And also a favorite of um, Fourth Disciples Beats, man. Because that track, man, it, it just it's just so rugged. It's just so dirty. The beat is just so dirty and rugged. It, it, just, had, it just has such a great underground feel to it. And... You know, I like I like the horns that were used, or saxophone, whatever, the brass instruments that are used in the song. It gives it sort of like a, a noir feeling, because Killer Sin is telling a story throughout that song. A great narrative he's spitting, so I really enjoy that. And, um, I mean, I, I don't understand why this album really wasn't, you know, seen as a great album. I mean, even now... Through the years, this album still, it seems to still hasn't really risen, have risen above, like, in its acclaim. Like, when I read reviews about it, most people call it an awful album. And honestly, I just don't think these, those people really get it. Or they're just not really taking the time to sit back and listen to the album and understand it. But it's a great album. I will admit, it's definitely not one of those albums where when you first, at first listen, it's going to grasp you. It's definitely an album that you're going to have to sit back and listen to a few times before you actually get it and start to hear and understand the, the greatness of it. But it's definitely a dope album. I think it's definitely a very slept-on classic. Um, but, you know, Wu-Tang fans and Underground fans enjoy the record, no doubt. They enjoy the record. Um, but I don't know much else I can say about this album, but... Oh yeah, Under Siege. That's another great album. That's I mean another great song I like on this album. That's one of my favorites on here. Uh, I like the acoustic guitar that is used. It it sounds like that song sounds like something that you would hear on a karate movie. 
every time I listen to that song, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like, cause with the, the beat and the get and the uh, like, the acoustic guitar that is used in it, it just sounds. It, that's just what it reminds me of. It, it 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 reminds me of a song that you would hear like during a like maybe a fight scene or something in a martial arts flick. That's the way it sounds, man. That's why I really enjoy that song. You know what I'm saying? But um. Uh, Swinging Swords is another great song. Um, I think a Billie Holiday sample was used as the hook for that song. And that's another example of how, like, you know, Fourth Disciple sampling fits perfectly with, you know, the the concepts of the song. And, uh, you know, Five Stars, Fourth Disciple, he actually sampled the theme song to M.A.S.H. For those of y'all who know the TV show called M.A.S.H., you know, I mean that's you know that's a very familiar theme song. He samples that on that song, and um, also the theme song to uh, the Incredible Hulk series that came, you know, that was they used to come out. They came out back in the you know late seventies and early eighties. The Lonely Man thing, RZA actually samples that on Wake Up. Yeah, and RZA only RZA produces two tracks on here, and that's Wake Up and Warface. But the rest of the production is handled by Fourth Disciple, and he does a a remarkable job. I mean, he he's easily one of my favorite producers, man. But um, yes. Anyway, Killer Army, Solid Weapons for Quiet Wars, released in 1997 on Wu Tang Records and Priority Records. Prior one of the Priority Records, one of many record labels Wu Tang had a relationship with back in the day. Um, this album is still in print. So if you go to your local Fye. Whatever mom and pop record store near you, and you find this album, I highly recommend you buy it because you won't be disappointed. And like I said, it may not grasp you at first listen, but when you sit back and listen to it a few times, you will understand the greatness of this album. So definitely go cop this. Killer Army, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Definitely go get that. And as always, um, love, peace, and happiness, and be blessed. Peace.